my name is Paul Grogan, and welcome to the Gaming Rules How to Play video for Cat Cafe, published by Alley Cat Games. Cat Cafe is a game for two to four players in which you are trying to make the most of your visit to a cafe filled with cats. You'll need to decorate your corner with toys, scattering some food, and making some comfortable resting places to attract the most cats. The game plays over a series of rounds, in which you will be selecting dice from a central pool, and then drawing an item onto one of the available spaces on your sheet. You will score points for the items that you've added, and for completed towers. The player with the most points wins. Each player takes a sheet and a pencil. Take a number of dice equal to the number of players plus one, and place them in the middle of the play area. The player who most recently petted a cat becomes the first player for the first round of the game. A round of Cat Café is divided into three phases. In phase one, the dice are rolled and each player in turn order will take one of the dice, leaving one remaining in the middle. In phase two, each player uses the value on the dice they took and the value on the dice remaining in the middle to draw an item on their sheet. In phase three, you check to see if anyone has completed a tower. If they have, mark the numbers at the top. This will contribute to your points at the end of the game. Once someone has completed three cat towers, the game is over and the points are added up. The first player rolls the dice. Starting with that player and then going clockwise, each player takes one of the dice from the middle, being careful not to change the number showing. The die remaining in the middle is called the central die. This phase of the game can be played simultaneously by all players, but I would recommend when you first play the game to take it in turns to ensure that everyone is doing it correctly. You may either draw an item on your sheet or pass. If you choose to draw an item, look at the value on the dice that you took earlier and the value on the central die. One of these values determines what item you draw and the other value determines where you draw it. It is your choice which die you use for each. The different items are shown on your sheet. Value 1 is a cat house, value 2 is a ball of yarn, value 3 is a butterfly toy, value 4 is a food bowl, value 5 is a cushion, and value 6 is a mouse toy. The value on the other die determines the level of the tower where you draw the item. You can choose any tower, but there can only be one item per hex, and you cannot draw an item in the hexes indicated by the scratching posts. The level is shown in the corner of each hex on your sheet. It's much more fun to draw the items, but if you're like me and not very good at drawing, you can choose instead to draw a single letter that corresponds to the item itself. For example, you took a die with value 2 and the central die has value 5. You could either draw a ball of yarn on level 5, or you could draw a cushion on level 2. Each item does something different and I'll explain these in a later chapter. Instead of drawing an item, you can choose to pass. If you do, circle three footprints on your sheet. Note that you begin the game with one footprint already circled. But what do these footprints do, I hear you ask? Well, you can use one or more footprints by crossing them out to adjust the value on your dice. Each footprint used increases or decreases the value of the die by one, but not above six or below one. You can use footprints to adjust the value of the central die, but don't actually change that die, as the adjustment only applies to you and not to the other players. For example, if the central die is a 5, but you really need it to be a 3, you can spend two footprints to make it a 3 for you, but the die is still a 5 for everybody else. Once all players have drawn an item or passed, check to see if any player has completed a cat tower, by having an item in each available hex. If you complete a tower, check to see if you have a cat house in that tower. If you do not have a cat house, circle the smaller number at the top of the tower. However, if you do have a cat house in that tower, circle the larger number instead. All of the players who also completed the same tower on the same round, and also have a cat house in the tower, also circle the larger number. Any other player marks the larger value with an X to show that these points are no longer available to them. If those players complete this tower in a later round, circle the lower value, even if they have a cat house in that tower. And then if at this point any player has completed three towers, the game ends and you proceed to final scoring. Otherwise, the player to the left of the current first player becomes the new first player and a new round begins. Whenever you draw a cat house on your sheet, immediately choose a cat that has not yet been scored, i.e. one whose box is empty on your sheet. Count up the number of items you currently have that correspond to the cat, 
multiply by 2 and write that number in the box. For example, I draw a cat house here. I choose this cat which scores points for cushions. I currently have three cushions, so I write the number 6. I cannot score this cat again. A ball of yarn scores points at the end of the game. For each cat tower, compare how many balls of yarn each player has. The player or players with the most balls of yarn in each tower score 8 points. If you have at least one ball of yarn in a tower, but not the most, you still score 3 points. For example, this is the end of a 3 player game. For each tower, the players compare the number of balls of yarn they have. In tower 1, player 1 has 2 balls of yarn, while players 2 and 3 have 1 ball. So player 1 scores 8 points for that tower, and players 2 and 3 both score 3 points each. In tower 2, players 2 and 3 both have 2 balls of yarn, while player 1 has none. Players 2 and 3 both score 8 points for that tower, and player 1 scores none. And so on. Whenever you draw a butterfly toy on your sheet, you immediately circle 2 footprints. And butterfly toys are also worth 3 points at the end of the game. Food bowls score points at the end of the game, 1 point for each different adjacent item. For example, this food bowl here scores 3 points. 1 for the other food bowl, 1 for the butterfly, and 1 for the ball of yarn. The second ball of yarn is not worth any points as the adjacent items need to all be different. Each cushion at the end of the game scores points equal to the level that it is on. For example, this cushion is on level 5, so will score 5 points. A mouse toy will score points at the end of the game based on how many of them are connected in a chain. 2 points for a mouse toy on its own, 6 points for a chain of 2, 12 points for a chain of 3, and 20 points for a chain of 4. For example here, you would score 20 points for this chain of 4 mouse toys, and another 2 points for this one on its own. At the end of the game, each player scores points for items as mentioned in the previous chapter. Write the points scored in the hex next to each item. Then, add up all of your points from cats, items and circled numbers on cat towers to get your final score. The player with the most points wins, and if there's a tie, all tied players share the victory. I hope you found this video useful in learning how to play the game. Please remember to like, subscribe and share the video with your gaming group in advance of your next game session. Thank you to Alicat Games for asking me to create this video and helping to sponsor it, and if you like the content that I create and want to support the channel, please consider supporting me over on Patreon. Until next time, take care, and thanks for watching. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.